Come in. Hey Jesse, how's it going? Good, you? Not bad. Good, good. How's things going with the training? Uh, you know, I'm a little sore. I've got a pretty sore knees, amongst yeah. other things, but you know, knees yeah. for now. For, okay, and is this, uh, it's, you've just started training, right? Just started training. So just starting like, to get the miles on? It's the first week. Okay, first week. Where are you feeling it? Where in the knees are you feeling the soreness? They're kind of like on the inside. Okay. And is it while you're riding or mostly after you're riding? Mainly after. Okay. And are you noticing it bothers you with stairs up or down stairs or up or down hill one more than the other? No. No. Hard to tell? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, when and I think about it, I haven't really thought about that. No? Okay. No. Maybe pay attention to that. It does okay. help a little bit. But um, there are some very common things that occur with cyclists, especially when they start first start cycling. Um, even even experienced cyclists, when they take time off and then get back into cycling, tend to actually get some knee knee issues until the muscles that are on the knees that stabilize the kneecap start to get strong again. Okay. So it's possible that's what's going on. Well, let's do a couple things first. I want to just take a look at structural because there's functional things and stability muscular stability there's also a bunch of structural things that'll lead to knee pain with cyclists that yeah we have to address first and then some of it is really just imbalances in the muscles that you haven't we haven't uh, worked out yet or muscles that are just getting stronger so they're not providing the stability they need to yet but eventually they will um, sometimes certain areas get really tight the muscles stop firing properly just need a little maintenance work and once once we release them, everything starts to work. So why don't we stand up first on uh, both feet right okay. here. Okay. And I want to take a look at, uh, we're going to look at your feet, your knees, a couple things about biomechanics around your hips and pelvis. On one leg, your right leg, lift your right, yeah, good. Now do a, just a slow kind of quarter squat. Okay, so what we're looking for here is to see if your arch is collapsing, if your heel is dropping inward. We also want to see if your knee is, is uh, coming medially or inward and what the angle around your knee looks like. Also, if your hips are equal or we should see the opposite hip rising up. So we're looking at balance, we're looking at stability, we're also looking at some strength. Um, now I want you to switch, let's look at the other side. Thing there, okay. So we're definitely seeing um, a little bit of an issue with, not so much on the left but on the right with your foot is over pronating, so your arch is dropping in okay. and your weight is falling on the inside of your heel. And then because of that, your knee starts to drop in and the angle at your knee increases, called a Q angle, okay. which puts a little more stress on the kneecap. Okay. Um, and it's not that bad, but there are ways that we can, we can fix that. Um, okay, that's good. Now I want you to just jump up and down and then just kind of do a little bit of a hopping. Try to bend your knee, land a little bit lower. Yeah, okay, let's do the other one. And you do have a very toe out uh, yeah. stance as well, which will affect that. your knees. So that, that angle will also have a major effect on the stability and the positioning of your knees. Okay. So we have to take that into account. I had a surgery when I was a kid and uh, my legs used to be like that. Okay, so yeah. Now, when you still have it a bit and it does affect your knees. Um, this kneecap is a little bit pointed inward, more so than that one. That can also create some issues with the pain around your knee. It's like, so very slow. Good, and back up. So you're definitely getting a little bit of hinging to your right side, okay. uh, more so on the way up, which is an indication of certain muscle imbalances from one side of your glutes and external rotators to the other. It can also be in the adductors, um, so that we'll have to address as well. And I think that's gonna be part of the pelvic rotation you have. I'm gonna have you turn around and then back up towards me. And what I'm gonna do, just a little bit of a look at your hips. Pelvis. So stand up straight, just roll your shoulders down towards, and just kind of slowly go down towards the floor, like as if you're going to go to touch the floor. And keep rolling, keep going all the way down. Just keep going until your kind of hands are getting close to touching the floor. Okay, so there's, you definitely have pelvic rotation and some scoliosis. Come on back up. And that rotation around your pelvis can have an effect on how your hips move okay. and can create some asymmetries on the bike, so you, which also might explain why this leg is over pronating more than this leg, just from years of this one hitting the ground differently. Okay. Um, so we're going to need to correct um, the over pronation in your feet, which is creating this, especially this knee to turn in and a bit of an increased Q angle. 
can be contributing to your pelvic rotation. We're gonna to have to address the pelvic rotation and try to get this as neutral as we can, because right now there's a, a major difference here. Your right side's sitting a lot higher than your left. Okay. Scoliosis is something that we cannot correct necessarily, but we can support through exercises. And, but for the purposes of cycling, it's not gonna be a major issue for us. So let's go on your back. Okay. Does that bother you? No. Okay, so you're a little bit um, overly flexible there. Your knee hyperextends a little bit. That's not so much an issue with cycling. It shouldn't be, as long as your um, seat height is, is set up properly. Okay. Now, let me know if there's any pain with these. I'm looking for clicking or popping in the knee. It's just a way of testing the cartilage, the meniscus. But you don't have any symptoms of that, but it's always good to get an idea to, of what somebody's joints feel like inside. And that's fine. Okay. Do the same over here. Okay, let everything relax. Good. No issues there. Yep. Feels pretty good. Okay. Now, just going to feel the muscles in here because this is sort of where you were pointing, where the uh, soreness was coming from. And this is the vastus medialis, the teardrop muscle. Cycling recruits a lot from this muscle and okay. for, for power and extension, but also to stabilize your kneecap. Okay. So if this muscle gets too tight and once it, if it tightens up too much, it gets congested. Okay. And then the the muscle will not fire properly, okay. and then your kneecap will start to migrate laterally or outward, and that creates a little bit of a rubbing underneath. On the, for the, so the essentially the kneecap sits in a groove, and if the vastus medialis isn't holding it into that groove, it'll start to migrate outward with the larger vastus lateralis and IT band, and it'll start to rub and create some of the pain inside of the kneecap. Okay. You were sort of pointing in this area, but more so up into the yeah. vastus medialis, which is probably more because you've just started cycling. This muscle's growing. It's being used more than you've probably used it for okay. a long time. And it's got to kind of catch up to the other muscles that probably get utilized more often with other activities. Eventually, this will start to, as it gets stronger and more conditioned, it'll go away. In the meantime, we have to keep it loose <clears throat> because if it does tighten up, it's going to fail and then you get other types of knee problems. One of the best ways is we, we do, I do something called active release technique, which is basically uh, deep tissue work with yeah. movement to try to release it. And that's one way we can release it. Massage techniques. Uh, you can do rolling with a ball or a foam roller yourself, which okay. we should be teaching you how to do for your quads, IT bands, glutes, calves. We should, you should be rolling regularly in addition to stretching anyways. So we'll show you some ways to treat this yourself and keep it loose. Um, but more or less, the, all the ligaments look pretty good. You definitely are overpronating. Your Q angle is greater than it should be. And you have a pelvic rotation issue, which we need to look into a little further now. But I think for the most part, what you're getting is just usage of muscles you haven't used for a while. Probably complicated a little bit by the fact that you're overpronating and your knees are coming in. We can easily correct that using an orthotic to just lift your arches up a little bit okay. and that'll straighten your knees out, align your knees, which is also going to allow you to train more and less likely to create other, other problems in your foot, Achilles, knee, hip, or even back. And especially when you start getting to the higher mileage, all these little biomechanical faults will limit or create a lower th training threshold. Every mechanical fault me means you will develop some kind of discomfort or soreness at a lower amount of mileage or training. When every mechanical fault that we can cor correct means you'll be able to go further, more hours on the bike type of a thing before you reach a, a threshold where things start to get sore or injured. So we want to remove as many biomechanical faults as we can and get you as perfectly symmetrical and balanced as we possibly can. I, uh, I learned a lot. I uh, can't wait to get uh, riding more and uh, I'll see you next week.
Sounds good. Next week we'll get in and get in do some uh, big work. We'll get you the orthotics. We'll get that scanned, order those off. And uh, later on I'll show you some of the exercises and the rolling you need to start doing to keep yourself maintained until I see you again. Cool. Comment, subscribe, like, and just share it with your friends and family because more people share it, more people see it, more people donate. It's all for the Ride to Conquer Cancer, August 25th. All right, 24th, 25th.